Hello friends, welcome to Foxy Tech. So today we're going to see another interesting troubleshooting article, which is about Kubernetes insufficient node resource. So if you are working on a Kubernetes, you may came across this issue at least one time, like when you schedule the pod, it may be stuck in a pending state or it may be ran out of the resources or it can be uh, restarted or it may be evacuated due to some reasons there will be a multiple things and you may face some consequences right but it's not a hard part because it's a part of our work daily day activities in kubernetes and we have to tackle it how the error may look like so you may see in this error i'll show you in my ground work uh, how it may look like with the wrong configuration, but we'll see this from this block and How we can do this so how to fix it? So if you think like your pod is restarted or it's not even scheduled or it's stuck somewhere So do one thing so go to kubectl get pods and check what is the current status about the pod then try to describe your pod sorry I missed this point here so you can describe your pod and understand what is the error it's showing could be it could be showing like this or it can be a different error but you will get a more understanding on cube describe command then so you may see like the pod is not doesn't have a resource let me show how it may look like so let me bring my terminal i'll increase the font before that hopefully this should be looks okay okay so i'll do one thing i'll check first my pods i have one pod pending what i'll do before i'll show you the demo i'll just delete it so it should not conflict with our demo so this is deleted and let's recheck okay no nothing is there so let me show you my yaml file before i run so i created one dummy file with high memory configuration so what it is does so i'm using a pod and i named as a high mem and i'm using just a sleep command and busy box let's break the pod with high memory i just named it for fun and i'm gonna give the thousand gigawatts memory hopefully it's not enough so let's run it what is this error it's showing so let me run this cube sit here sorry apply iphone f hi ma'am okay the pod is ready and let's check the status of the pod obviously it should go on the pending state let's try to describe it so hi ma'am how oh, you can see this let me show you in the middle of the screen let me give more enters okay you can see this it's showing no design available insufficient memory so this could be one error maybe another case your pod may be already running and uh, there will be a multiple pods may be running on the same node due to the high priority in pods your pod may be evacuated as your pod doesn't have a proper priority set right that's also the one could be the reason or maybe your pod is misconfigured for some reason or your node is completely out of running memory or resources due to any other issues your pod may get evacuated right so how you can tackle it if you are a kubernetes admin you can do the describe nodes and understand about the node first so how we can do that so let me go to go and check my node configuration for that i'm going to list first my nodes I have two nodes let me get let me describe about my nodes so let me check my master and understand about it so what is the current cpus it has maximum two and epidermal storage and memory is not even more it's very less a lot of is very less you can see the memories are already a little bit occupied on the master side and it will be almost similar on the node side also right the other worker also could be the similar so i don't have enough memory obviously because i given 1000 cpu 1000 gb it's not correct one maybe even 10 gb also it's not going to sustain in this node right some part may require a higher memory so on that case you should choose the correct node if you have more number of nodes you can get the nodes labels 
where you can check the labels as you guys know already so you can go to the label section and see what all the matches label you can use you can use the one for your pod and schedule to the high memory pot high memory pots right right so now we have seen this crab and it's understandable what is the current configuration everything so our pod is not sufficient so we can reduce it and we can reschedule it and uh, top nodes will help you if you have metric server installed uh, you can check your node pods uh, or sorry node usage but unfortunately i don't have metric server installed on this server i can't show you sorry for it but in our in my another video i have shown in detail what we can how we can check it right so how to fix this let's quickly do this so i'm gonna go to high mem what i'll do i'll say 10 m right i'll just do the cube studio apply my change hyphen f hi mom oops what happened da, 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 da. Ah, okay let's change it so i'll do one thing delete then i'll do the apply kubectl get pod okay so my pod is already started running so this is good for me now so i have fixed with the wrong configuration but your case it could be a completely different you need to check the node and details what all the things it may be storage also could be a high utilized already and you need to tweak your pods but it's not all the case you can pick different node right so either one so this two scenario we can see some other things it may be like exceeded due to the high priority one evacuation threshold if it's reached obviously some low priority pod will be automatically evacuated how we can tackle it as we see in the resource and limit and other way is like a you can optimize your containers let's say like you have single container pod that's sufficient but if you have more number of containers in a single pod you may need to go very depth understanding about it and need to tweak it right so over requested you need to tweak it and overloaded nodes how you can do this could be there is a multiple deployments which is not even needed that may be running on your node so what you can do just scale down it and your node will be relaxed and you may use very better what happens if the node is highly utilized so there could be a lot of things as i said one your pod may be evacuated and one maybe one of your major part may get out of memory error or if it's a cfe intensive your application will be very slow and your users may complain and they may fluctuate frustrated with hey what is happening on this how i can use your service right so that's not the case we should always want we should have a better systems right so always we have to overlook on this how you can look i'll explain you later but before that let's understand and how you can tackle it either you can scale down let's say like everything is needed and i can't even oh, scale down anymore how i can tackle yes there is a, always a way you can manually add the nodes if you are managing your complete cluster manually this is the one way you can use it you can add a more number of node with a high cpu or high memory and you can move your loads to the particular thing and investigate external hooks is there anything else is blocking your nodes and that is causing your high resource or overloaded nodes that could be a lot of things you need to very much understanding about it and uh, you need to check on it let's say like a csi drivers or something that may be using your host network and it may be pushing and pulling the data and updating to any external storages that also could be the other reason it may be causing your things but you need to understand what is running on your node and how it's the applications are communicating is it internal inbound or outbound connections are enabled if it's outbound connection what is outbound connection is called could cause the issues right you have to have a detailed understanding about it that may help you to troubleshoot this kind of issues better so how you can tackle it so enable the quotas and the namespace limits this is one big best thing you can do it 
not only in the pod level if you have on the namespace level it may be how it's our over committed resources on the namespace level even so that one thing you can do it second thing have a cluster auto scaler you do so mostly everyone has now and if you are in a cloud it's automatically handled but try to check your configuration time to time and see is it a valid or is it a scaling in scaling out on all the time and it's working properly right maybe again out of box uh, recommendation if you are running this auto scaler or something sometime it may not scale down your nodes let's say like you have enabled maximum limit of 30 unfortunately every 30 nodes are scaled up but it's not scaled down what happens you may running out of you may spending lot of money on those nodes which is not even you are using and it will be costing also for you and it's not good for the environment obviously right have a cluster auto scaler it's a very good but at the same time have a vigilance on that and how it's scaling in how it's scaling out have some kind of a graph on or some kind of a matrices on daily basis get alerts and keep watch on it right and if your pod is very much pre critical and it's serving to the external customers try to give some kind of a priority for it so the priority help you to give more resource to the particular pods you don't get evacuated at the first place and second time you will get a more resource even the node is getting overutilized right so this could be additional tactics you can follow it other than that what we always recommend have a continuous monitoring that is very much important so any system if you are missing your monitoring and if you are not enabling any kind of alerts it's like you are shooting your uh, foot with your own gun right so always have this kind of a vigilance because it may help you a lot to have a better systems and also with the monitoring you can do identify the resource bottleneck over time see it this continuous monitoring help you to give a lot of data about how it's some performing and is there any bottlenecks or anything you can understand and you can enable the patterns whenever it is needed so either you can have a log level monitoring also sometimes somewhere it may help on the application side but metrics level is 99 percent helps always on the resource side right and keep watch on the resource best log sorry resource management best practices there will be a time to time suggestions because the Kubernetes release lot of latest version and that may have a lot of new features and they may deprecate lot of features and we keep on watching the best practices help you to understand how the current system is utilized and how you can better configuration you can make it for the your Kubernetes cluster right so these are all the things you can do it in case your pod is stuck in the pending state or if your cluster is completely out of running out of resources these things could help you to optimize better right so i'll attach this block you can see some kind of a recommendation on the auto scaling which auto scaling you can use in the pod level and some kind of a pod scheduling which pod scheduling you can use and uh, last year we have prepared the best practices for the kubernetes you can check this and uh, read about it and also we recently published what happens when your pod get a cpu high cpu and memory so this request and limit will help you to understand about it you can click the our blocks and understand it right you can check about prometheus and grafana also in this urls it may help you to understand a bit about it if you like to read our complete kubernetes articles and you can check here and i have attached my kubernetes troubleshooting series you can go to this and understanding about the kubernetes troubleshooting series so hope this video is useful friends you can if you like you can share with your friends and also if you have more if you like to have more recommendation or more any kind of a more scenarios you can post in the comment we'll try to cover how we can troubleshoot that right thank you guys bye bye have a good day